math conversion instructions. There are actually five in this category. The degree radian to BCD from BCD and truncate. We're only going to do lab projects with the to BCD and from BCD. The to BCD and from BCD instructions. These instructions and BCD in general is not as popular as it used to be. The main reason that I included a project in the manual was because I'm just as interested or more interested in training people that have to maintain the systems out on the shop floor than I am those that are learning to use the software for the first time or use the hardware. There are literally tens of thousands of these devices installed out there on the shop floor running with older systems. What you see in front of you is a thumb wheel switch, a four digit thumb wheel switch. This particular one has four wafers or four sections. If you look closely at the larger device, you'll see that there are end caps and then there are four sections. And the second object is one of the sections. Looking at that section, you see five pins. There are four signal pins and one common. Here I show a quasi-electrical diagram of the four sections connected together. Notice I only have one common connection. I don't show five pins in each section. Each one of these sections is broken down into four values or four signals, four highs and lows. Four can be encoded into 16 possibilities, 0 through 15. Well, for binary coded decimal, we only use 0 through 9. If we were doing hexadecimal, which we aren't because this thumb wheel switch goes 0 through 9 and then rolls over again. So there is no A, B, C, D, E, and F, which you would have for hexadecimal. So out of the four pins, 1, 2, 4, and 8, Remember, you've 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is 15. We're never going to see anything above 9. You're going to see 0 through 9. Now here I have some 16-bit integers divided up into four groups of bits, four groups of four bits. So if you consider the four-layer or four-segment thumbwheel switch, that gives you 16 bits or four groups of four. If we take the first four bits and we consider their position. Now the position up in the diagram with one to the far left, then two, four, and then eight on the far right, you can ignore that. That's just a diagram. But I'm going to convert that first or the most significant digit of the BCD first, which is zero, one, one, zero. If you add that up, you've got no 8s, you have a 4, a 2, it adds up to 6. If we look at the next group, we have an 8, no 4, no 2, and a 1. 8 plus 1 is 9. Look at the next group, 0, 0, 1, 1, we have no 8, no 4, we have a 2 and a 1, which is 3. Look at the next group, we have an 8, no 4, no 2, no 1 which is 8. That's how easy it is to convert BCD from binary to BCD. Now 16 bits is 16 bits. Just looking at 16 bits you have no idea what's meant by the programmer. Those 16 bits could represent anything as you will find out or you already have found out doing the lab. So if we take the next group Four zeros, well that's zero. We have an eight, we have a one, a two, and a four, that adds up to seven decimal, and then we have zero. Take the next group, we have a two, a one, a four and a two is six, and we have a two, two, one, six, two. The last group, we have a two, a four and a one is five, a two plus one is three, and an eight. 2538. That's simple. Now looking at the actual logic that we had you edit in the lab project manual, 
the first rung, if we turn on that switch, input zero, we have a retentative on timer that is incrementing. And of course, all timer data types in 5000 are one thousandths of a second. So you're accumulating thousandths of a second. And this will continue to do so until in the second rung it reaches 99,999. It can go much higher than that. But we reset it back to zero when it gets to 99,999. All that it gives us is a moving value of integer to work with for our Todd and Fred instructions. I had you add these two rungs. And remember, the, the only purpose for the first two rungs of logic is just to give a changing value, a changing value of a double integer to use for conversion, well, to BCD and back from BCD. And we have a, I call them Todd and Fred, a to BCD and a from BCD instructions. They're really simple, and you can see that the changing value timer data type, the accumulate value, if you look at it and then you look down at the bottom of the destination and the from BCD, you'll see that they're, they're equal. And in between BCD element zero of that array is the BCD value converted from the decimal value. Now there's no reason to convert from decimal to BCD unless you have a device that needs BCD. And you have no reason to convert from BCD to decimal unless you have a device that generates BCD. And in the lab projects, or I should say in the manual, I show you those two devices. A thumb wheel switch is one that produces BCD. And then the seven segment display is a device that uses BCD to display a value. The from BCD would come from the thumb wheel switch. And then if you wanted to work with the math, with the decimals and stuff, in other words, you wouldn't ordinarily do any math with BCD. You would do it with integer, double integer, floating point, etc. But if you have devices that require BCD, then you need these two instructions to interface back and forth between these two devices. Another thing that we had you do is we had you change the appearance of how the information is displayed by selecting the tag and editing the tag. And for style, select binary. Now you can see the binary bit pattern. This is actually what is in the computer. Everything in the computer is binary. You wouldn't see any decimal values. I see on the screen here that I have a different tag in here for the source for the 2BCD. I'm going to change that. We converted the changing value accumulate into hundreds of a second by dividing by 10. So I'm going to put this in the edit mode, drag this tag down to there. And we'll change these to binary. I had you add a rung with three move instructions to move some of these values into other registers or into other tag names, other memory locations. And I'm going to show you creating something, a new tag in an array online. You cannot expand an array online, but you can create it. But once you've created it, that's it. If you want to change the shape, the size, you have to go offline, do it, download, and then go back online. So I had underscore 100th second. That's my tag name. New 
dent and this is where I can I'll just make it 10 it really doesn't matter I didn't use an array in the book but I wanted to show you how to create an array online and of course that's not a tag there because that's 10 double integers so I actually have to go and pick one element now in your lab you only had one tag name a hundredth of a second I've got 10 tags, a hundredth of a second, element 0 through 9. I'll do one more of those. Okay, I want to drag down BCD0. Doing this online again. And this is BCD underscore decimal. And I want it to be element 0. That's not a tag yet. See, it's undefined, new. Now if I'll, I'll pick this element zero. Now if I try to edit this, see this is grayed out. I cannot go in and change the size of the array once it's been created. Once it's been allocated a memory location, that's it. If you want to change it, you have to go offline, make the changes, and then download it. This is already binary. After you put in these move instructions, if this is not showing up with 32 binary, a 32 bit dent, in other words, if it's showing it kind of truncated or only partially displayed, just double click on it and then click out of it and it'll pop it up to the full length. This rung right here, sole purpose, is so you can look at this binary pattern and see the decimal equivalent. See this is a decimal shown in binary, shown in decimal. Hundredths of a second binary, decimal, and then BCD binary and decimal. And you can see that these are not the same value. Then I had you add equal instructions and no op instructions after the Todd and the Fred, the 2 BCD and the front BCD. The equal instruction, I'm using it as a display. By the way, you see that this doesn't show the full 32 bits. If you double click on it and then click off of it, it'll expand it out. Here you have hundredths of a second and hundredths of a second. Now they're two different tags. The reason I did it this way is so you could look at the binary bit pattern here and then the actual decimal value here. You could look at the BCD bit pattern here and what it represented in BCD. So you can easily compare the decimal value here to the BCD value here. Same thing for both of these. If you actually want to look at the values, all that you need to do, remember that this logic up here just generates you a number. So this is the actual logic that you're working with. I just turned off the switch to the, enable the timer so now you can compare in hundreds of a second in the top rung there, rung number two, you have a value, a decimal value of 3735 and if you take that decimal value and say it's actually um, I want to show it as a BCD value, then you've got 14,133. Now remember that all of this is irre irrelevant unless you have a use for the BCD, which we don't actually in any of our projects. I don't use BCD devices in any kind of electrical engineering now, but there's still plenty of them out there in manufacturing and in processes. You will come across them and you have to deal with them. And remember, for a person who's working on somebody else's code or ladder logic, you actually have to, a greater challenge, interpreting somebody else's code than you do writing your own. Now, everybody, when they first starts out, struggles to write ladder logic for an application, what we call a blank sheet program, where you start with absolutely nothing, trying to decide what the first rung is supposed to be 
<laughs> that's always a challenge. And we're not going to get into that procedure right now. But my point is, right now what you're doing is familiarizing yourself with BCD, not the actual application. Now we're going to look at some of these values in a different format and discuss them. Okay, here's uh, a couple examples. We take the binary, and this binary is the value that you see hundredths of a second. And if you convert it to decimal, it's 26,936. But if you convert it to BCD, in other words, you take those 16 bits up there, and remember, you cannot read there are no, there's no way to verbalize a binary value other than you could look up there and say 01101001001111000. What? That doesn't mean anything to anybody. That's just almost babbling. It, there's just no reference. Working with binary, we either have to convert it or work, work with extremely small binary values. And even then, you're still converting them to decimal base 10 in your head when you're working with them. Okay, so let's compare these three here. All of these come from that binary pattern of 16 bits there. Now it's actually 32 bits in the changing value accumulate, but we're, we kept the values small enough so we only had to deal with the first 16 bits, 0 through 15. But there are 32 there, 0 through 31. We're only working with the first 16. Keep it simple. So if you take that bit pattern, that is the identical bit pattern that would represent 6,938 if BCD is implied. In other words, if in your program and your application you are implying that that's BCD, then it represents 6,938. However, if you're implying that it is integer, then it is 26,936. Now this can be confusing. That's why we're spending a little time with this. This is probably one of my least favorite subjects to discuss, simply because there's not much in the way of application for it anymore other than troubleshooting older systems. So here we have another example. That bit pattern in decimal represents 2160 or in BCD 870. You notice in, in the division there we're dividing by 10 that 269,360 divided by 10 is obviously 26,936. You just drop a zero in both of these cases. Here's another example However, we have a problem here. And this is another thing that can occur if you're not paying attention. Okay, you, you look at the changing value, 85,460. And then you look at the bit pattern for hundredths of a second. Now, if you weren't looking real close, and if you weren't a good judge of the length of binary values, in other words, the most significant position where there's a one, you, you might not notice a problem here. But I'm showing you that if you convert the hundredths of a second shown here, that bit pattern is 2,160. But you might say to yourself, now wait a minute, 85,460 divided by 10 is not 2,160. That's because this division instruction was not executed. The last thing, the last time that this division instruction was executed, the value for changing value.acc was 21,600. Now remember that the changing value.acc, that belongs to another rung. That's continually changing. But if you stop executing the division instruction, hundredths of a second is going to stay right where it was at the last time this rung was true, even though the change in value keeps changing. So the 
actual bit pattern for hundredths of a second should be what we just popped in there. And it should be 8,546 converted to decimal or 2,162 converted to BCD. Now, I know that's a lot of uh, data up there that if you just looked at it without any explanation, you'd say, what in the world is going on there? What is in red is incorrect, even though the hundredths of a second in the instruction, the destination, that bit pattern would be 2160 decimal or 870 BCD. But you cannot assume that that hundredths of a second is equal to the changing value divided by 10 because you have to know if that division instruction is actually being ex executed. So right now what you're looking at, you cannot take hundredths of a second and assume that that is source A divided by source B. Okay, here's another example. And uh, this, this one has been executed. And you see that 95,280 divided by 10 is 9,528, 9,528. And that bit pattern, that binary pattern, if you convert it to BCD, is 2,538. Just in case you have forgotten, let's look at that binary pattern. You've got 0, 0, 1, 0. So you've got no 8s, no 4s. You have a 2 and no 1s. So the value for the first four bits there is 2. The next one, you have a 4 and a 1, that's 5. You have a 1 and a 2, that's 3. And then you have an 8, 2,538. Now, in the lab, I had you do some, uh, if you want to call it translating. And so I'm putting the values up here now. In other words, if you stumbled across these four 16-bit words of memory and you assumed that they represented integers, what would their values be? And you can see the values there. Now, in order for you to do this, you would have to, let's just take the first one up there that has a decimal of 26,936. You would have to step through those 16 bits and go, okay, let's start with the first four, the, the least significant bit, which is zero. So I have no ones, no twos, no fours, and I have an eight. You'd have to write down eight. Then I have a 16, a 32, no 64s, no 128, and I have a 256. Then I have no 512, no 1024, and I have a 2048. I have no 4096, but I have an 8192 and a 16384. You'd have to write down all those decimal values, add them up to get 26,936. Or you could go to your calculator in Windows, set it to Programmer, and then type in the binary value and then change the display to decimal and you'd see 26,936. Maybe we'll show that when we're back on the screen for the computer rather than the slides here. So these are the four values you should have determined for your answers in your project manual. Now, if you took those same four bit patterns, we have the same four repeated, but you knew that they were intend intended to be BCD, what would the values be? See, completely different. So 26,936 above, if you're assuming that those 16 bits are decimal, down below, if you assume they're BCD, then it's 6938. And you can look at those four groups of four. The, the, the most significant, you have a four and a two, that's six. You have an eight and a one, that's nine. You have a one and a two, that's three. And you have an eight, 6,938. Real simple to convert the bit patterns to BCD. Converting it to decimal, though, now that's a challenge. And in the manual, I showed you how to do, how to use the calculator in order to do this process. Now, this is the device that generates BCD and you want to convert it to decimal. So here you have that four segment 
thumb wheel switch and you've rotated the dial on the most significant value so you see a 7. Inside you will have turned on the 1, the 2, and the 4 position. The position up above and the position down below doesn't match. If you look directly below the 7, in memory you'll see the four most significant bits are 0, 1, 1, 1. And you know that that's a 7. If, if you look at the next four, you've got 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, I'm reading them from most significant to least significant. So if you want to start all the way over at the far right with least significant, you've got no 1, you have a 2, no 4, no 8. So that's a value of 2. What I wanted to point out is that in the thumb wheel switches, the thumb wheel has eccentrics in there and levers that turn on the switches to encode the decimal value. The memory value, uh, controller I.O. backplane, comes from you know, an input module. By the way, these uh, thumb wheel switches would use a 16 discrete input module to bring in the state of these 16 switches, four for each of the segments. And in memory, you would have that 16 bit pattern. And then you would use a from BCD to decimal to convert it. So in other words, the the instruction itself is taking that bit pattern from those four segments of thumb wheel switch and it is creating a decimal value. It's no longer a BCD value. The BCD is in the top memory location. And then your logic used the FRED from BCD instruction to convert it to a decimal value that represents what the BCD device generated. Uh, really not that complicated, but sometimes hard to keep track of if you're only looking at the bit patterns. The last thing we did in the lab was had you delete all of your rungs of logic and add this one rung. So, And we created a couple new tags, thumb wheel switch and BCD display. So we have a thumb wheel switch and it sends in a binary value and we convert it from BCD to decimal but we store it in a tag called BCD just so we know it came from a BCD value. But if you converted this to decimal, it would not be equal to the BCD value. But we want to work with decimal in our logic. So we convert the BCD to decimal. Then we take and we add it 6 to the decimal value. And then we converted that decimal value back to BCD. So you see the thumb wheel switch says 29,010 uh, 29, and the display says 29,016. And remember that the only reason we're doing BCD is because we have we're implying we have BCD devices. You would not do this unless you had BCD devices. Now we didn't actually show a device that uses or requires BCD. So here we have our little example of adding six. So in memory we have two memory locations at the bottom of the screen there and the, the most bottom one is our value and then right up above it you see you have a memory location that has a, a binary value of six. If you look to the far Right, 0 is your least significant bit, then a 2 and a 4 equals 6. So we're adding the bottom memory location to the next one up in logic, and the result is displayed right above the add BCD element 0 plus 6. Then we're converting that from decimal to BCD, and then we're sending it out to a seven segment display. Now the value on the seven segment display has nothing to do with this example. It's just something I grabbed to use so you can see that we're taking 
the 16 bits, in other words, a 16 point discrete output module, 16 digital outs, and we're sending it out to the seven segment display. Each four group of four inputs drives one seven segment display. Each of those uh, BCD to seven segment decoders have a one, a two, a four, and an eight. And then the electronics in there illuminates the segments to show the values. Now the value in my memory location matches the project, not the green lit up segment. So I hope that didn't confuse you. I didn't think it was worth the time to create another graphic that exactly matched. Okay, what is the bit pattern for the value 7531 BCD? And you can look at the a bit pattern there, 0111. That's a 7, correct? A 1, a 2, and a 4 adds up to 7. A 1 and a 4 adds up to 5. A 1 and a 2 adds up to 3. And a 1 is a 1. What is the bit pattern for the value 7531 as an integer? Not the same. And we bring them up close for comparison. So the one on the top is 7,531 is an integer shown in binary, and the bottom one is 7,531 as a BCD. So you can see how you could easily get confused. That's why if you're going to work with BCD, you have to keep very close track of who's on first and who's on second. Not my most favorite subject, but I labored my way through it just in case anybody was interested that, that is working with the manual. Thank you. We're going to include the Just for Fun at the end here, simply because it's just more of the work with BCD. What we had you do, we had you take 16 bits from one word called thumb wheel switch, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on, down to bit 15, and then we technically map those in to four separate values. So we have units 0, 1, 2, 3, tens 0, 1, 2, 3. Then we had you use code to multiply the tens, the four bits by 10 to get a unit of tens. In other words, units are units. So the first four up here, we didn't have to alter those. So units 0, 1, 2, and 3, those four bits, whatever they come up to in BCD, they're the units. Then the second group of four, we multiplied by 10, then the third group by 100, and the last group by 1,000. Then we added the units to uh, BCD 0, which is the tens, and then we added, and we put it in 3. So we took the sum of units and tens and added it to hundreds and put it back into the same register. Then we took and added the thousands to the addition of all the others to get a final value. And that's all we did in that entire just for fun. Basically I took the long way to do the BCD conversion.